It's now time for us to make the character move on the grid. And we have one first problem, is that when we place the character in the editor, it might not be on the grid. We have two ways to solve it. We can either manually make sure that we use the snap and place the character at the right position, or we can do that via the script. Let's head to the script tab. And we could think about doing it in the player script. After all, it might make sense to let the player initialize its position. The problem is, you remember, the character doesn't know about the grid, so it has to ask the grid for the right position. In the ready function, we do get a reference to the grid, to the parent. Now, the problem is, in practice, this function gets called before the grid has been added to the scene. Godot calls the ready function when the current node and all of its children have been added to the scene and it works from the bottom up. It starts with the lowest children and then goes up the hierarchy. So it will add the sprite, then the player, grid visualizer, and only then will we get the grid. So if we were to ask the grid to update the child position, update the player position, we'd get an error. That's why we'll do it in the grid script. Around the top, let's add a reference to the player in the ready function. So we'll get the player node. And then we will ask to place it on the grid and to give it a new position. The starting position of the player will be the result from the update child position method and we'll pass in the player. The update child position returns the target position where we should place the player. Now this will work because it only takes the current position of the node and then it adds its direction. And by default the direction is 0, 0. It's a new vector 2. Because of that the player will snap to the cell it's hovering at the moment. And then we have to set the position on the player we'll set it to the start position. Let's try to see if it works. And yes, the character snaps to the cell. Now we're done with the grid and it's time to make the character movement work. So let's head back to the player script. In this new starting example, I've modified it a little bit to simplify the way input is being handled. There was a comment from Hook Flash who said that the way it was done before was inelegant and might cause headaches down the road. So he offered the solution at the bottom to make some arithmetic with the inputs. And uh, I've decided to go with this one at the top because it's very easy to read and understand. On every frame, we reset the direction to 0, 0. And then we just check in which direction the player is going. And based on that, we modify the corresponding axis in the direction vector. There's no more top, down, left, or bottom directions stored at the top of the script because we only use them once. So now we still have our movement, but it's not grid-based, and we're going to add that. To make the character move on the grid, we're going to force it to move from the cell he's in to the next cell every time the player presses an arrow key. While he's moving from one cell to the next, the player cannot change direction. So for that, we need a few values. First of all, we need a boolean value to know if the character is moving or not. By default, he won't be. And then we need two things. We need the character's target position. The player will get the target position from the grid and it will move towards it. So let's add that variable. It will be a vector2. And we also need the target direction because we change the direction on every frame based on what the player input is. But when the character is moving in a certain direction, we want to store that. We want to know where he was headed and when he's done. So let's set the target direction variable as well to an empty vector. Now we can throw away the logic related to the speed and the velocity. We'll just keep the move method call and we're going to change how we do things. So first of all, we want some logic when the character is not moving and there's an input. If the character is not moving and the player gives him some direction to move to, 
Then we will set the new target direction and we will ask the grid to give us a target position to move to. The target direction will become the direction. So we have to check if the grid cell we want to move on is empty or not. For that, we'll have to ask the grid. So remember, we defined the grid up there in the ready function. And now we'll ask it if the cell is vacant. So we'll pass the player position and the player target direction. So the grid will tell us if the cell we want to move to is empty or not. Then if, if the cell is empty, we can move to it. So we have to ask the grid to give us some target position. To do that, we call the update child pose method and we send ourselves the player. And this will return our new target position. And we can uh, set the character to moving in that case as well. If we set a new target position, the player is going to move starting on the next frame. Then there's the rest of the logic. If the character has gone through this part of the code and it is moving, it has to move towards its goal. We want the character to move smoothly on the board. So to do that, we will use the same code as before. First of all, we'll set the speed to max speed. The character will instantly move at 400 pixels per second. That's the value we set up there. And we want to set the velocity like usual. So the velocity will be equal to speed times the target direction. Remember, that's the one we're using because if the player presses the other keys, if we use the direction, the direction would change on different frames. And then we multiply that by the delta value because we always want to use the amount of time that was elapsed between frames. And in that case, we can move the character based on its velocity. We can do that. You will see that it won't stop at the target. However, it will move on the grid. When we set a direction, the player will keep going through it because we never tell the code that it stops moving at the moment. We have to add a bit of logic to see if the player reach its goal or not, or if it's going to reach it on the current frame. To do that, we have to check its distance to the target. It's his distance to the target position, and it will be a vector 2 like usual. To calculate the player's distance to the target, we need his position, and we already have the target position. The distance is just a difference. To do that, we first get the character position. Then we'll take the absolute value of the difference between the character's position and the target position. We can't calculate the absolute value of a vector, so we have to use the vector x and y components separately. So we'll call the absolute function. It removes the sign of the operation. If it's negative, we'll only get the positive version of this value. And we'll make a difference between the target pose x component and the player's position x component. Let's do the same for the y components. It's important to have the vector and to have the two components because we don't know if the player is moving on the x or on the y axis. Now we want to check if the player's velocity, the distance vector, is greater than the distance to the target. In which case, we will force the character to stop on the goal. We'll need two conditions that are very similar. We'll first take the absolute value of the velocity on the x component and we'll compare it to the distance to the target's x component. This condition checks if the player is moving on the x axis, if it's going to move past the goal on this frame because the velocity is larger than the remaining distance to the target. In that case, we force the x component of the velocity to be equal to the distance to the target. So it stops on the target position. And we have to multiply that by the target direction as uh, we've used the absolute values of those vectors. We, if it's going to the left, we have to negate that value. Also, if that condition is true, it's going to stop to the goal. So the character will also stop moving and the player can start moving again on the next frame. 
Now let's copy these few lines and we want to do the same for the Y components. We just have to replace the X with the Y's. And now we can test the game and see how it looks. If you just press once, the character will move to the next cell on the grid. However, if you keep the keys down, the character will continuously move on the grid. And the good thing with that setup is it also works with eight directions. You can find the full code on GitHub inside the final folder, link in the description. And the good thing is if I find or someone tells me a better way to code anything, I will improve this code there. So it's always up to date. That said, thank you kindly for watching and see you tomorrow for the next one.